people in here who are ready to lose? Who wants to lose? Who? I think it's time that we just throw in the towel on the city of San Francisco, don't you? I think, I think there's some Google Glass people who have some very nice plans for the city, and I think we all have a bright future. They'll give us houses in Detroit. We can go there. Uh, we can go buy entire city blocks in Detroit with like the amount of money that we have to spend at a food truck for lunch now. So I think, I think, right, we can Bitcoin our way. Uh, I just think it's, I think we're done, right? I think, you know, we don't, we don't even know how to win anymore. Uh, no? Uh, are there other of you losers in the back that want to move in so you can hear the proceedings? Uh, oh, you, you can hear me? Good, good. Uh, hey everybody, I'm Nato Green. Welcome to, that's not important. Uh, uh, I'm just another Red Diver Maybe Jew comic, the Tarzan of gays of San Francisco. Um, so, uh, and uh, it's, it's nice to see you all here at this function to launch uh, uh, the campaign kickoff for David Combos. This is my daughter, Eloise. Eloise is five. She's, she's learning to read, and when I put up the David Compost sign in my window, she sounded it out, and she said, Compost, like the garbage can. Um, and, and, and I said, that's right, because like compost, we will spread David all over the ground and new food will grow to support the community. Uh, so uh, give it up for the garbage man, David Compost. So uh, our, first, uh, our first speaker to, uh, to kick off the morning is uh, uh, our, one of our other favorite people, the Emperor of the Excelsior. Please welcome John Avalos. Today's a flannel day. I'm wearing flannel and so is uh, Dale Green. It's also part of uh, my roots as a Chicano activist from Los Angeles. Flannel is a big part of uh, what we show on the street. Uh, this election that we have, that David Campos is going to win with all of your support, is historic. Because we will be electing for the first time ever a Latino representing San Francisco to the State Assembly. Wow. That has never happened before. And we'll be, we'll be electing a Latino who comes from the Mission District. I had a Latino who's going to represent the interests of the Mission District, which are actually representative of other places where Latinos exist in California, where we're actually working class communities are under attack. We have a real need to grow our base of support. It's working people's power that's actually going to tip off where our country goes, where California goes, and where San Francisco goes. And I can't think of another supervisor on the Board of Supervisors who has represented this community as strongly as he has, promoting worker rights, promoting immigrant rights, promoting affordable housing, all these things that make our local economy sustainable for our community. We have to fight, and having people in California and in Sacramento who represent these interests are vitally needed right now, vitally needed. So David Campos, we will lose him in, in San Francisco because he's going to the assembly with your help. But he is so needed there, especially because we're, we, we might have a Democratic supermajority in Sacramento, but we also have some moderates who actually want to like just like make agreements and negotiate in the middle to get things done. We need people who actually have a vision for where this state should go, where San Francisco should go. David Campos represents that, and he will represent that as a Latino, the first Latino ever elected with your help to the State Assembly. Thank you. Everybody. Uh, you know, he wears flannel because of Chicano activist roots. I wore flannel because I'm of the generation that, you know, we had Nirvana. So, you know, that's the difference between white activists and Chicano activists is Seattle brunch in the 90s. Anyway, uh, so our next speaker is going to reminisce about the old days, long time ago. Uh, most of you are too young to remember, but once upon a time, there used to be families in San Francisco. Uh, you're going to have to read books about that to see what that was like. I think they might have been portrayed in some nut grainy documentaries. But to talk about that, we have Henny Kelly. You know, I want you to know that I am 
so proud to be here because I have always said that a city, a state, a country is judged by how the public servants, how the people who work for us treat the youngest, the oldest, yes. uh -huh. those with disabilities, and those who cannot take care of themselves. Yes. Hey, hey. And this man, this man, David Campos, will be judged a giant. He comes from the people, he cares for the people, he cares for families. I'm a teacher, teachers care for families, nurses care for families, and teachers and nurses all have said this is our endorsed candidate. My daughter with her, my daughter had triplets three and a half years ago. My daughter could not afford a house. My husband and I had to take out the largest mortgage I have ever heard of to get her to qualify. And she had to buy the house with her brother because she couldn't do it by herself. She's a teacher. This isn't right. This man, David Campos, will work for families. He will work for the working poor. He will work for seniors and children. He will work for the grandparents, the parents, and the grandchildren. He is the man we should elect. And I have a parent here, a person from a family who will tell you a little more about why. Why teachers and families believe in David Campos. Claudia? Claudia, introduce yourself. <laughs> I'm going to try to get up here. Thank you, Henny. So, I was born and raised in San Francisco, and now I'm raising my two children in San Francisco. One's going to karate after this. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm a family liaison. I've been doing that for five years here in San Francisco Unified. And I want to let you know a little bit about the families that we're working with. So first of all, all educators in the school sites, inside, inside and outside of the classroom, are working to provide students in our schools a sense of safe, safety and stability. And they may not have arrived at school that day feeling that way. So they might have arrived at school knowing that their family member might be deported while they're gone. That's right. They might have arrived from public housing projects that are so unsafe for them in so many different ways. Right? Their, their parents might be underemployed, not because they want to, but because they can't find the right works, work. Or they're getting paid unlivable wages. And as a result, these kids are going home to apartments where they're living doubled and tripled up with other family members. Or just members of the extended community just to be able to cobble together the rent. We have families that are being evicted and many more that are facing the prospect of being, eviction, of being evicted. And David has made himself available to these families. He's come and listened to their stories at many different school sites. And he relates to their struggles and he tells them that many of their struggles were his own struggles. And not only does he leave it there with what their struggles are, he listens to their vision for what a safe and sustainable San Francisco would mean for them and their kids. And he tells them that he shares that vision and he's gonna champion that vision. And it's for that reason that I'm so proud to endorse David on behalf of UESF for that deep solidarity for San Francisco student and families. Uh, so our next speaker uh, is, uh, is coming to speak more on behalf of uh, women uh, uh, is uh, Juanita Flores. Buenos días. Este, para mí es un honor y un gran orgullo estar este día aquí eh, apoyando al supervisor David Campos. Hello, good morning. For me, it is a huge honor and, um, uh, and I'm very proud to be here supporting David Campos. Ser una de las 100 mujeres, y especialmente mujer latina, eh, que he sido elegida, eso es un grandísimo honor. Y claro que las mujeres latinas inmigrantes estamos en esta campaña. It is such an honor to be one of the 100 women for Campos. 
especially as a Latina woman, the Latina immigrant community is for David Campos. All right. Y esto es claramente, ya ahorita se está hablando mucho de el trabajo y el apoyo que ha dado el supervisor y que ha trabajado tanto en cambio de leyes y apoyos para los trabajadores, para la comunidad más marginada, para los derechos de todos los inmigrantes. And this is not for nothing. It is because David Campos has worked hard for our community. He's worked on issues affecting worker rights, immigrant rights, um, issues affecting marginalized communities in general. And that's why I support him. Pero especialmente algo que me llega a mí personalmente como mujer, como inmigrante, como madre, como trabajadora, es todo el apoyo que ha dado a, a las mujeres. El apoyo que ha dado para que haya fondos para que la violencia doméstica termine, para no solamente que haya albergues, no solamente que haya eh, eh, recursos, sino que también vaya al fondo de la raíz, a la salud mental de estas personas que están pasando violencia doméstica, a sus hijos, a su familia en general, que no queremos que se separen las familias, sino que queremos que haya recursos para que estas familias se fortalezcan y tengan una vida libre de violencia doméstica. And I especially uh, support him as a woman, as a mother, uh, as an immigrant, uh, as a member of this community who um, faces many issues. And David doesn't just support um, women superficially. He supports all of the issues that we're facing and especially has been a champion and a supporter uh, for survivors of domestic violence. Woo! Not, not only uh, by fighting for funding for shelters um, and for programs, but for really addressing the root causes like mental health issues that are facing families facing domestic violence. Um, and he has fought hard to get at these root issues and to understand that in the immigrant communities these issues uh, are complex. And he's worked hard to make sure that when they're just domestic violence that families are not separated. Y una de las cosas también muy importante es el apoyado la caravana de las trabajadoras del hogar. Y en ese momento no nomás se presentó y hablar en una conferencia de prensa, sino que él ha dicho su historia, que él viene de una madre que es trabajadora del hogar y eso es mucho poder y mucho comportamiento y por eso sabemos de dónde viene su fuerza y su valentía para la lucha en los cambios y para que las trabajadoras del hogar sus, tengan mejores condiciones, tengan mejores salarios y que no tengan más abusos. And he's also been a huge supporter and leader supporting the domestic, vi uh, the domestic worker community um, and the caravan for domestic worker rights. And he has fought hard to support worker rights, the conditions that we work in in the house household. And this is a personal issue for him because his mother was a, a domestic worker. And so he knows uh, what, what um, this work is like and what we face and is a champion fighting for, for this community every step of the way. Y por último, quiero decir que por eso las mujeres inmigrantes, madres, trabajadoras, estamos apoyando porque él está apoyando a las mujeres que somos muchas veces las más vulnerables, madres solteras, trabajadoras abusadas, pero con el apoyo salimos adelante. Y sí se puede. Y vamos. A to finish as an immigrant mother in the city, I am support, supporting David Campos because he is with us, he supports workers, he supports families, he supports immigrants. He, it, it's, it's not easy, but we are going to make it and we are going to make it because we have su his support. Yes, we can! <laughs> What are the floors, everybody?
Uh, I just had a great idea for your first legislation in Sacramento, which is to support a completely unregulated uh, right to have guns for women and gay people only. Uh, <laughs> California. What do you think? It would solve a lot of problems. Um, so, uh, our next speaker is uh, is the best health commissioner we've ever had in the city of San Francisco. Please welcome Rama Guy. Thank you, NATO. You're the best organizer that helped us lead the way for Healthy San Francisco, led by legislatively when Amiano was the supervisor, and now our assembly person, Healthy San Francisco, which was the role model for what we call ACA, except we covered uh, undocumented, and unfortunately we have to do that. So we're going to send you to Sacramento to finish the job. <laughs> so. You know, uh, Amiano was a role model, and uh, now Supervisor um, Campos has shown and demonstrated that he is the viable person to send to Sacramento because when he creates a consensus to get the votes, like we did for Saint, Safe St. Luke's, right? Like we did for Safe St. Luke's, for that's how we get families to stay in San Francisco. All of us. Yes. All of us. And David Campos has shown by defending and moving forth to finish the job so we not only had St. Luke's rebuilt, but a bigger and better St. Luke's. We are the only community in the nation that has achieved this. And we want to thank you for doing it. We also want to thank you. I don't want to repeat what my sisters and brothers said about um, building consensus the right way and not just to come and say you build consensus when it's time to put cherry on top of your chocolate sundae. But he has built consensus with the people and that's why we won and not the person who put the cherry on top. Okay? So that's what we're fighting about. Even though David's opponent, and I can say this, says that the votes at the Board of Supervisors were 96% the same. That's because other people plowed the way so he could put the cherry on top. Okay? And that's the difference, and it's a sophisticated argument, but we gotta get it down. You gotta find your metaphors, you gotta get out there and be an activist. This is how women are, with the definition and the empowerment of women is gonna change when you elect and entrust the next step. We do have achievements around women. I wouldn't be standing here. Our granddaughter, Assemblyman Amiano, wouldn't be standing here playing a solo on the trumpet for you today if we hadn't made advances on women and girls. But hell, we got a long way to go. And we need people who can build consensus and entrust it to the next level. And David Campos is the man. Woo! 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 Oh, one more time, for our guy. Our penultimate speaker of the morning is the poster child of compromise values in San Francisco politics. <laughs> he has sold out again and again for living wage and uh, affordable housing and city services and health care. Time and again, the reigning king and queen of the progressive movement, Tom Ariano. Great crowd. Hey, how about a nice hand for NATO? Really? You're under arrest. Sorry. He's a he's a non-citizen from Seattle. So I'm I'm very I'm very excited about this race. As you can imagine, there's a um, a mixture of emotions. I really don't want to leave, but if I gotta leave, I want David Compost for many many substantive reasons. Plus the fact uh, that he has a really handsome boyfriend. And now. Now, husband, and, and uh, the other thing is, uh, Phil, you're gonna you, you're gonna be a first lady uh, in the future. So, <laughs> if you need. <laughs>
if you need any, if you need any tips, uh, <laughs> NATO did have a suggestion for legislation for David Campos, and that would be uh, uh, polygamous same-sex marriages. Could you see that? <laughs> Who's the alpha bitch? Uh, <laughs> Well, I'm wearing, I'm wearing these colors by instinct and I feel like, you know, Mighty Mouse will save the day. <laughs> so there's a lot of trashing of San Francisco uh, in Sacramento, the land that time forgot. And, uh, and, but we're still very effective. And one of the reasons that we are effective is because, you know, fr frankly, we don't fuck around. Right. There are ways to reach consensus without selling out. And uh, I think we've seen that. Uh, uh, in uh, very popular pieces of legislation that I know you've supported, uh, the Trust Act, the Domestic Workers Act, none of that would have happened if there was any kind of transactional bullshit. None of that would have happened based on a premise of, well, I'm a swing vote. The reason that happened is because we were focused and we were principled and we had populist support. Harvey Milk always plugged into the populist part of the San Francisco dynamic. And you know, and, and sometimes that is not progressive by any means. But it does say that people want to trust you, they want to know that you're accessible. Um, I, I find it uh, really appalling that uh, there's such equivocation about the uh, principles uh, of not only progressive people, but also people who feel that populist, uh, that populist pulse, uh, and equivocation around affirmative action, pardon fucking me, <laughs> Jesus Christ, just because there's bullies in some demographic, everybody picks up their skirts and runs across the street, no, no. And so that issue is gonna come back to us in where it should be in the assembly, and I want David there to vote on it. The other thing I can count on is, you know, when mother left the table and went to Sacramento, uh, there were attempts to uh, uh, water down some of our revered legislation that happened with all of us, healthy San Francisco particularly, rainy day, you know, and it was David Campos and John Avalos who said, no, you can't do that, you can't water it down. So what happens? God forbid David doesn't go, the other guy goes and waters down to a trust act, waters down domestic workers. No, we want vision, we don't want retroactive uh, thinking about how much uh, uh, popularity, how well you're gonna do in the polls, how much money we're gonna raise. I don't want that, I really want to continue the legacy that we've all started, uh, and particularly in Sacramento with San Francisco being so progressive, and uh, knowing uh, and working with labor, and David, if you think labor is difficult here, when do you get to Sacramento? <laughs> I was sorry. Well, don't you know who I am? I'm Tom Abiano. <laughs> we don't care. Uh, <laughs> and then, and then on LGBT issues, you know, I, I think there's some perception that people confuse. The, yeah, we need straight allies. Are you kidding? Some of my best boyfriends have been straight allies. <laughs> they know about the empowerment that we deserve as LGBT people and not excluding and that was another gift of Harvey Milk he talked about disabilities he talked about transgender he talked about seniors he talked about how Asian voters should vote uh, um, or, or at least remedy what was happening with their voting machines and you know that to me is what success is that to me is what politics is and that's why to this weekend particularly it's so auspicious that we're honoring the members of Cesar Chavez, that David Campos is my candidate and the next assemblyman for District 17. And finally, ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, the next assemblyman, David Campos. Thank you. Thank you so much. Wow, what an amazing, what an incredible, what a great looking crowd today. Uh, I, I want to thank all of the speakers, but I want to begin by acknowledging my life partner, my husband, Philip Wong, who is in the middle of the room. Thank you for, uh, for uh, putting up with me and for uh, giving me the ability to, to do something like this. 
Um, you know, you never, you never want to follow Tom Amiano because he's so incredible. Um, but I, I want to say that uh, I, I think this is a very, very uh, special day. And I was worried, to be honest, about uh, the turnout today with, with the rain. Uh, but, you know, in our culture, rain is good luck. Uh, and I think it's, uh, it's a sign from the heavens uh, that there's a little bit of... Uh, you know, political cleansing that needs to happen in San Francisco. Uh, I think that we need to, I need to, we need to make sure that we bring power back to the people of San Francisco. And, you know, I grew up in a country where being in politics was a dirty thing. That people went into politics because they wanted to enrich themselves, because they wanted to take care of themselves and the people in their circle. And I came to this country because I believe that in this country, politics can be something positive that is used to improve the lives of people. And as someone who came here undocumented and who has received so much from this country, for me, being involved in public service is a way to give back to a country that has given me so much. And I'm in it because I believe that at the end of the day, in this country, our political system can work for people. That our political system can empower the electorates. And I think that right now, given what's happening and some of the things that we're hearing about in Sacramento, this is the perfect opportunity for San Francisco to send a very clear message that in San Francisco, the people of San Francisco rule. Yes. You know, I'm running against someone who is a good person, but we do have a different vision of San Francisco. When this campaign started a few months back, that campaign was ridiculing me for talking about a tale of two cities and the disparity that we have in San Francisco. I was criticized for saying that we have growing inequality in San Francisco. They were making fun of me. And I was proud to be the subject of ridicule because I knew what was happening on the ground. And we commissioned a study around evictions that confirmed that that tale of two cities is really manifesting itself in terms of what's happening in our neighborhoods. 170% increase in Ellis Act evictions. There is an actual third party, neutral party study that shows that San Francisco has the second highest inequality of any major city in this country. And that in fact, our inequality is growing at a faster rate than it is in any other city. Huh. And if you're lucky enough to be among the top 5% of households when it comes to income, you're making close to 17 times what the bottom 20% of households in San Francisco make. It is not sustainable for San Francisco to leave working middle people behind. It is not sustainable for San Francisco to be a city where you have to make a seven-figure salary to be able to afford here to live here. In that sense, this campaign is not about David Campos. And in the next 66 days, you're going to hear a lot of bad things about David Campos. There's a reason why the other campaign is breaking records in terms of fundraising, not only in the history of San Francisco, but across the state. And they're going to make me seem like I have two horns and that I have no principles. We love you, David! Yeah. But I, I want to prepare you for that. I want to prepare you for that. Because they have a lot at stake. There is a reason why the Chamber of Commerce has said that even though they usually only support Republicans, that in this race, they have heard good things about the other candidate. There is a reason why lawyers who are in the business of evicting tenants 
are hosting special fundraising fundraisers for the other candidate. There is a reason why the Chamber of Commerce and its minions has held fundraising events for the other candidate. Because this campaign is about changing the tide. Yeah. It is about taking the city back. Yeah. It is about redefining politics in San Francisco. And redefining it in such a way that politics actually represent the people's interests. Yeah. Yeah. That what happens in City Hall, what happens in the state legislature is not dependent on who can hire the most expensive lobbyists, but actually on what is best for the people. Woo! Yeah. That the basic things that allow people to live in a society are protected. That you can't talk about the affordability crisis and continue to build $5 million condos for ultra-millionaires. You cannot talk about affordable housing and not give our teachers the opportuni opportunity to actually live in the city where they teach. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That you cannot talk about affordability and not give our workers a living wage. Yeah. And what is the debate on wages? $15 an hour in San Francisco for a worker is barely enough to live on. Yes. Why are we debating that in, in City Hall? There is no debate to be had. Let's make sure that people who work full time can actually afford to live here. Yes. Let's make $15 an hour happen now. Yeah. And you can't talk about affordability and livability without talking about health care. Yes. 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 And you know, Tom Amiano, thank God for Tom Amiano. Yeah. Because as much as other people try to take credit for what he has done, right. and by the way, a, a rule of thumb, if you want to know what other people are going to be working on as a way of in, you know, enhancing their political careers, just look at what Amiano is doing now, because in six months from now, they're going to be stealing it. But Amiano passed universal health care with the support of a pretty broad coalition. And over the years, the Chamber of Commerce, the Golden Gate Restaurants Association has tried time and time again to water it down. And when the Affordable Care Act was passed, that was used as an excuse to undo the health care security ordinance in healthy San Francisco, and we have beaten them back. We have beaten them back. But there's still the case that there are thousands of workers in San Francisco who to this day do not have access to health care. You know, my opponent has said, you know, we agree 96%, uh, 98% of the time. But sometimes one decision can have a tremendous impact. When he decided to no longer co-sponsor the legislation that closed a loophole that is being exploited by, by employers to pocket tens of millions of dollars, that decision has impacted thousands and thousands of lives. Absolutely. How many, how many little boys and girls have been unable to go to a doctor because of that decision? How many workers have had to figure out how they can get better on their own because of that decision? And the difference between San Francisco and Sacramento is that in Sacramento, those decisions are going to be made almost every single day. Yep. Almost every single day. And to the extent that we have you know, a few dozen lobbyists in San Francisco and Sacramento, we have thousands of lobbyists that are going to make it so that whoever represents San Francisco is going to have to make some tough choices. And I don't know about you, but the person who follows on Tom Amiano's footsteps cannot be wishy-washy about anything. The person who follows Tom Amiano's footsteps 
has to be a champion for regular people. Right. Has to make it clear that when it comes to protecting affirmative action, there is no middle ground. Yep. You're either for it or you're against it. That's right. And that the moment that you start regurgitating the right wing's speech about quotas, that that's a sign of abdication and a sign that you're not representing the interests of your constituency. That when big business talks about how we need to leave Prop 13 alone, that it's been people like Tom Amiano who have said we need to close those loopholes and we need to reform how our tax system works because unless we do that, we're going to continue to be 49th in the country in per pupil spending. And we cannot talk about the need to reform education funding without also talking about how we need to get past our obsession with prison building in California. Quiero hablar un solo un poco a la comunidad que habla español aquí en esta en este en esta oficina. Este es un momento histórico para nosotros. Porque en toda la historia de San Francisco es una sorpresa para mí, un shock, pero no ha habido una persona de descendencia latina que haya representado a San Francisco en la Asamblea del Estado. Yo creo que es tiempo que haga historia. Sí se puede. Necesitamos mandar un mensaje muy claro que la comunidad latina merece un lugar en la mesa. Que la, la comunidad latina merece representarse por sí misma. En español hay un dicho, dime con quién andas y te diré quién eres. En yes. español there is this saying, and people have heard me say this, you know, tell me who you walk with and I'll tell you who you are. That's right. I think that the people that are here, who are the people that I walk with, tell you who I am. We have teachers. We have nurses. We have hotel workers. We have faculty at City College. We have working people who are making this city function every single day. And there is a reason why these amazing individuals have chosen to stand with me. Because they know that when the rubber hits the road, I am not going to be trying to figure out whose side I'm on. <laughs> there is a reason why the Sierra Club has endorsed my candidacy. There is a reason why the Harvey Milk LGBT Democratic Club has endorsed my candidacy. <laughs> There is a reason why the Latino Democratic Club has endorsed my candidacy. And you know, some in the LGBT community have kind of tried to make it seem like, you know, being LGBT doesn't really matter anymore. Right? That, that it's really not important to have LGBT representation in Sacramento because we made it. <laughs> but if you look around not only this city but the rest of the state of California, the LGBT community has far from made it. We still have law after law that discriminates against LGBT people, especially the transgender community. And when Tom Amiano passed AB 1266, the far right that was trying to, that, that undid same-sex marriage was trying to undo this important piece of legislation. And it's, by the way, no coincidence that the people who are fighting and pushing the en envelope on LGBT rights have been queer people. S almost 60% of all the top 100 bills involving the LGBT community in the last 10 years have been put forward by members of the LGBT caucus, which as of today, makes up about 6% of the entire legislature. And why does that matter? It matters because Harvey Milk was right. And the straight 
allies in the legislature that are supporting my candidacy get it. And they have said to me, David, as much as it's important to have straight allies, there is something about having the authentic queer experience that teaches us, straight people, what it means to be gay and the challenges that come with that. And the idea that San Francisco can have no queer representation in Sacramento Unacceptable. It's not only something that hurts San Francisco, right. but it actually hurts the entire state of California. Woo! So, I'm here to plead with you because we have 66 days left in this campaign. Yeah. 66 days. The other side, like I said, is breaking spending records because they believe wrongly that money buys elections. Because they believe that as long as they have that nice fancy mailer that the people of San Francisco are going to be duped into thinking that the status quo is acceptable. We are not going to have, we cannot have the money that the other side has, but what we have is you. People power. And so, if if you believe, if you believe that we have an affordability crisis, if you believe that we have a crisis in terms of the values and priorities of this city, if you believe that we are facing a crisis, then I ask for your help. Campaign with us in a way that actually recognizes that this is a crisis. Between now and June 3rd, we have to go door to door, every single household in AD 17, to make sure that people know that there is a difference. If you are able today to sign up for the phone banks, for the precinct walks, for the visibility, for all the things that need to happen to win this race, I ask you to do it. And not only do I ask you to do it yourself, but I ask you to make sure that you recruit people in your family, in your household, in your neighborhood, on your block. We are going to win this campaign block by block, house by house. And the last thing that I would say is that there's a lot writing on this. Because if this election is lost, it's more than the election that is lost. We lose a part of San Francisco because we really are fighting for the soul of San Francisco. We are fighting to define what the city is about. Is it about the big corporate interests? Is it about the big time developers? Or is it about giving working, middle-income people, low-income people, the opportunity to live in this city? Yes! Yeah. I came to San Francisco because I want to live in a diverse community where working and middle-income people have a chance to be successful, to raise a family. And the San Francisco that I'm seeing out there is changing too rapidly for me. Right. And it is time for the people to take our city back. Right. And I think that, and I will, I will close by saying this, I think it is only appropriate that we are launching this kickoff and this countdown of 66 days on the weekend that we're celebrating and honoring the memory of Cesar Chavez. And it is, Thinking of Cesar Chavez, who I had, was lucky enough to meet when I was a young freshman at Stanford, that I want to end with this and ask you a question. ¿Se puede? Sí, se puede. 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 Yes, we can. We're going to do it June 3rd. Thank you so much. David Campos, everybody. Thank you again. To
two, Juanita Flores, Roma Guy, Penny Kelly, Ty Ramiano, John Evelos for speaking. Let's do this. Let's get to election night at the victory party. We can all fist each other in celebration. It's going to be very special. David is bringing the gloves. Uh, please, to help win the campaign, uh, donate money and uh, grab and uh, grab a bag of lint and lists on the way out so you can go and talk to your neighbors and uh, get people to vote. Oh, and Roma Guy wants to close. Okay, and so, and don't forget on Wednesday at the Marsh in San Francisco on Valencia, a hundred women for compost are sitting and talking about how we move the agenda and get a thousand women for compost in nine weeks, 66 days. Here we go. Woo!